Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making something called a Basque cake. B-A-S-Q-U-E. Uh, this is I'm taking this from a French recipe and I'll put a, a, a link on my blog to where I got the recipe from. Uh, the chef's a guy called Bruno and uh, it has a lot of ingredients so I'll go through, I'll list the ingredients now but then I will tell you about them as we progress as well. We have 300 millilitres of milk, 20 grams of semolina, 20 grams of soft brown sugar, 80 millilitres of double cream or heavy cream, the zest of one lemon, three egg yolks, 40 more grams of uh, soft brown sugar, uh, 10 grams of corn flour, a teaspoon of vanilla paste, and the seeds from one vanilla pod that I've scraped out. All of those ingredients together are going to make us a custard. That custard is going to go inside our cake. Then the ingredients for the cake are 280 grams of plain flour, uh, 125 grams of ground almonds, 160 grams of soft brown sugar, three eggs, another teaspoon of vanilla bean paste and the, bean, uh, the seeds from a vanilla pod, 250 grams of unsalted butter, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking powder. So that's all the ingredients. Uh, to start off with, what we're going to do is mix the three egg yolks with 40 grams of sugar, the 10 grams of cornstarch and the vanilla paste and, and vanilla pod. I'm going to whisk those together And so then the next thing to do is to pour our milk, the 300 millilitres of milk and the 20 grams of sugar, 20 grams of semolina and the zest of the lemon into a saucepan then we're going to bring this milk to a boil and we're going to pour it into our egg yolk mixture whisking all the time then put it back on the heat until and whisk it and, until we have a, a thick custard. So I will heat this milk up and uh, I'll be back with you. Uh, as the milk comes to the boil and we can get on to the next step. So our milk is almost at a boil now.
Okay, so now it's bubbling, so it's just about ready to come off. And I'm going to pour a little bit into our bowl. Have to whisk it very hard so that we don't get eggs curdling. Then we pour the rest of it in and keep whisking. Then we pour it all back into the pan. And we keep whisking hard all the time. And while that's whisking, I'm just going to heat our 80 millilitres of double cream. Oh, I, I missed one ingredient when I was talking to you earlier. Also into this custard mix is going to go a tablespoon of rum. Okay, so this custard is thickening nicely now. And so with that, I'm going to just wait for the cream to come up to the boil. It's almost there. Okay, so the cream's boiled, so I'm going to pour that in. And mix it in. And just... Whoops, that's the wrong one. Just a quick tablespoon of rum. And I'm going to put that back on the heat.
So I'm now going to let this cool down completely before we go on to the next step. So I'll be back with you as soon as this is cooled down and I'm set up to do the next stage. So I'm back with you now and uh, we have our custard made and once it was made I laid it out on a baking tray which was covered with cling film and then I put more cling film on top so the skin wouldn't form and allowed it to cool down to room temperature. So now uh, I've just put it into a bowl and covered it with a cling film again. We'll use that later but let's get on with making the cake mixture. Now I've um, this recipe actually calls for a nine inch uh, pie dish or cake, yes, pie dish really, which I don't have. So I'm using a nine inch spring form pan. That should do just as well. I just recap these ingredients. I have uh, 280 grams of flour, 125 grams of ground almonds, 160 grams of soft brown sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, three eggs, 250 grams of softened butter, that's very soft, and a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste and the seeds from one vanilla pod. So the first thing to do is to put our butter into this mixing bowl. That's it, and I'll just scrape this extra little bit off. And put that on there. And we're going to cream this together with the brown sugar ground almonds, teaspoon of salt and the vanilla bean paste and vanilla seed pods, uh, pod seeds. Now we want to cream this until it's nice and fluffy and it's going to take about three minutes probably. So that's nice and fluffy. Now we're going to add the eggs one at a time, if we can. And we want to mix it until it's fully incorporated. And we scrape down the sides so that the egg gets into all parts of the batter. Put the next egg in. Final one. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to scrape this off. The next thing to do is to sieve the flour and the baking powder into the mixture and then just Beat it on a slow speed until it's combined. We don't want to overmix it. So what I'm going to do is take the beater off for the time being. 
I'm going to sprinkle the baking powder into our flour. And then give it a little mix like that. Oops. Pick that up. And then we'll mix this on low until it's just combined. As you can see, it's thickened up, but we need to scrape the sides down to make sure that we get the flour mixed into everything. And that's just about it. So now we take this paddle, this beater off again. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a piping bag and pipe it into our cake tin. Getting all of this paddle attachment is always a bit tricky. I don't like to leave it behind. That's about as good as I'm going to get, I think. Okay, so that's beaten. So what I'm going to do is just pull it together a little bit, like that. And we need to put that into a piping bag. So. The way I tend to do it is to bend over the end, stick it into a, a container and try to scoop it in. Just get the last bit. And 
and then we can take it out of our container what I'm going to do is just cut the end of this off I don't need a nozzle I think that's okay And then we want to work this down the bag and we want to pipe it in this tin. We now have greased the tin and I've greased, I've put a, a liner in the bottom and I've greased the liner on both sides. So what we want to do is try to Do this as best we can. Now, I, I can't claim to be one of the world's best at piping, but it's not going to be seen. Right, so having piped that once, now we're going to pipe round the outside just once more. And then we'll save this because we need this for later. So then the next thing to do is to transfer our custard into another piping bag. Now I've had to, once the custard goes cold of course or room temperature it sets so you may have to stir it a little bit. Just pop the custard in. Now you may think, well, that doesn't look like custard. That, the colour of it is due to the brown sugar and the um, bean, the vanilla bean paste, and such like. So we'll cut the bottom off this as well, not quite such a large nozzle and what we need to do then, I just want to fill that gap there. What we want to do is to pipe this custard inside I mean you could actually just spread it inside but piping it means you're not disturbing 
the better. And I'm just going to fill a few little gaps around the edge there. That's it. And I'm going to take an offset spatula and just gently press down those extra bits that I've put in. Like that. Then we take the remainder of our cake batter and we're going to pipe this as well. Just about enough, I think, because, yep, there's just about enough there. And then what we do is take our spatula and level that out. As best we can. take some cling film and we're going to cover it just like that And we're going to refrigerate it until it's gone firm. That might take an hour or a couple of hours, but it doesn't matter if you've got something else to do, you can put it in the fridge, go away and leave it and come back later and uh, take it out of the fridge and bake it. So when I come back, I will have preheated my oven to 180 Celsius or 160 Celsius with a fan or 350 Fahrenheit. We'll take this out of the fridge, put it in the oven and we'll bake it for 45 to 50 minutes. So I'll be back with you once this is uh, chilled down nicely. Okay, so now I'm back with you and I think you were probably expecting me back with an unbaked cake as it came out of the fridge. And I did do a video of that bit, but I forgot to turn the microphone on. So I thought well, there's no point in showing you that. I'll just tell you what I did. Basically, when it came out of the fridge, I simply took the cling film off, took a fork and made a, uh, sorry, took an egg wash and egg washed it twice. Then I took a fork and made a pattern on the top. Then I put it in the oven at 180 Celsius, 160 fan, 350 Fahrenheit, and I cooked it for exactly 45 minutes. Um, I was checking it all the time and paying particular attention after 40 minutes and I thought the edge might just be getting a little bit too dark so I put a pastry ring just around the edge 
to stop it from going any darker. Now it's been out of the oven for 20 minutes. Uh, so it's still quite warm, but after 20 minutes, I can release it from the cake tin. And there it is. Now it's still got the base on it, of course, which I will take off. Um, in fact, maybe I'll do that right now. If I can. I turn this over. And the paper's come off as well. And you can still see some of the swirls of the pastry. Um, if you remember, we piped the pastry in a spiral. Now I'm going to turn this back over again and I'm going to let it cool completely before I cut it. So that's it. I'll bring it just a little bit closer for you so you can see it like that. Okay, so back again and the cake is now cooled. It's sunk a little bit in the middle, but I think that's because it has this creme pat. I'm just going to cut it and we'll have a look at it. And I hope that it's reasonably well set. So that's the cake and you can see the definition of the, uh, the custard in the middle there. I'm just going to sample it. I don't want to eat too much because I'm supposed to be trying to get rid of my fat stomach. Mm. I'm going to have another piece because it is very, very good. I had a comment from a family member who said that when I taste these things, I take a long time chewing without saying anything. Well, that's probably because I was taught not to speak while you're eating, um, but I'll try to do it. It does taste really very good indeed. Mm. That is simply wonderful. I'm going to eat the rest of it, of course. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll come back and see me again in my next video, which won't be too long. Until then, happy baking.